Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video, I'm going to be taking a third look at this stunner, the Compact Desk Pro 386S. It's a 386SX machine that I've been fixing up on the channel over the past couple of months. And if you want to see our previous videos on this, there's a link above. Uh, but this week there's a few things that I want to take a look into. So first I want to see how clean I can get it. I won't be able to do any retro brightening because of the weather, but I have some IPA that I'm going to give it a going over to see if I can make it shine. Uh, but I've also managed to source a second system unit. Now it's a lot more beaten up than this and it's really only for spare parts. Uh, but there's a few things in there that we can already salvage. Uh, the first of which is the hard drive bracket that's actually missing from this machine. And uh, there's also a 1 meg memory module which should be compatible with the card in this. Uh, so I should be able to just slightly upgrade the memory on this machine. Uh, I've also purchased a Dallas real-time clock and so we'll be able to put the hard drive settings in this finally and have them stay in permanently. Uh, but the more interesting things that I want to do this week are check out the main board in the other machine. The one that's in this one is uh, slightly unusual. I can't find any diagrams that match it online. So I want to figure out whether that's really an unusual thing or whether maybe the diagrams are just incorrect. Uh, we'll see if it matches. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is characterize the VGA implementation. So if you look at the chipset in this, it seems that Compaq did their own VGA chipset. And of course I don't know whether they did something rushed and cheap uh, or whether they've done a really good job there. And so I'm going to compare it with some other known VGA cards from around the same era uh, to see what its performance is like. Uh, I've also got a hard drive in the other machine. I'm going to take a bit of a poke around and see whether there are any interesting games or utilities uh, that we can put across onto this machine. The first thing that I'm going to do is remove this Dallas real-time clock here and I'm just going to do that by cutting the cable tie that's been used to hold this in uh, with a knife. I'm not too worried about damaging this because it's uh, certainly old and needs replacing and then I'm going to stick in the new chip uh, it's quite difficult to get that out I'm not sure why they needed to cable tie that oh, I'm going to get something to lift that out with I don't have a special chip puller for this but I'm just going to use one of these back plate covers and try to gently lever hopefully not levering the socket out uh, while I'm at it uh, there we go, that's coming up now. Uh, so that's really quite stuck in there. Um, and here is the new chip. Uh, so hopefully that just sits in. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to get it in. Uh, there we go. So I'm not going to bother cable tying that at all because that is really quite solid in there. Uh, let's power it up and see whether we can get the hard drive settings to stay in. Now you might recall that in order to get into the BIOS, as it were, and set the hard drive settings, uh, you have to use the compact setup utility. Uh, so it actually asks for a diagnostic diskette, and I'm not sure if that's the same thing or not. I suspect so, uh, but this particular disk doesn't actually have any diagnostics on it. Uh, at any rate, it's been a real pain uh, to not have the hard drive settings in there permanently, uh, it's especially a pain for filming because every time the machine gets switched off and on again uh, you have to put the settings back in again uh, and this takes quite a long time to load so I'll be really happy uh, if I'm able to get this to work and uh, the drive settings stay permanently in there uh, so let's see if this program actually works uh, it should come up in a moment uh, with the uh, start up of the program uh, so it says memory size error. I don't know what that's about. Um, I'm not aware of any issues with the memory setup at the moment. Uh, I don't know whether this is American date format, but it's not going to matter because it's actually the 10th of the 10th. And uh, the corrected time, I'm going to just going to put 12.04, which is roughly right for right now. And uh, the main drive is a three and a half inch drive. It's the 1.44 megabyte floppy. I'm just going to put 1.2 megabyte for the five and a quarter drive because I don't actually know what that is at the moment. 
and as you can see it detects the hard drive type there uh, type 55 60 megabytes uh, without me putting any additional information in uh, so I'm going to call that good and uh, we'll exit and save changes and so the acid test will be whether we can boot from the hard drive after turning the machine off and on again okay well let's switch the machine on and see whether it retained those settings uh, so this has been off for a while now and uh, obviously if it's correct it should remember that the drive is there now I don't know whether it will still ask for the diagnostic diskette I'm not sure how you actually get back into that uh, if the uh, settings are actually correct uh, so at, in the moment it would normally beep uh, so it is beeping but uh, there's no message and it's just going straight to the hard drive but at least that looks like it's working uh, and now we can boot to the machine I've pushed the machine to the side for now uh, so that we can have a little bit of an unboxing on the channel which we haven't done for a while uh, this is the spare parts machine which I haven't actually opened yet uh, the keyboard came separately in a different package and I've already opened that you can see that it's in really different condition than the one that I originally had uh, it's really yellowed and absolutely filthy as it happens uh, this is a German version uh, so there's a Z and a Y switched around there are some umlauts little less than greater than sign and lots of abbreviations here alt gross strug einfug enf build and uh, pos1 now I could use the cable off this uh, if it were compatible but it turns out that this has actually got a plug on the end of it at the back of the keyboard and this one is wired directly into the keyboard you can see that's quite stretched and uh, that would have been a nice replacement but uh, unfortunately that's not going to work uh, this keyboard is also slightly higher than this keyboard uh, but I actually prefer this one anyway the, the key action on this uh, feels a little bit more clicky uh, this is really mushy like you're pushing down on I don't know old bits of pizza or something it's really terrible so uh, this is not of great interest to me let's put it to the side and get the box open I've taken my address details off the box here so protect my identity and also so that I don't end up with a lot of unsolicited gifts as much as that would be nice I'd have to declare all this it's just a hobby channel uh, it's not a business so uh, that would make things a little bit more complicated for me let's take a look here it uh, seems to be packed uh, fairly well so I'm going to take this foam out and uh, we'll remove the machine and see what we've got it's not uncommon for stuff to be wrapped in newspaper uh, especially in Germany oh, it looks like I have it upside down uh, people are very environmentally conscious here. I'm not sure of the theory behind using polystyrene foam as well as newspaper. And this stuff is really filthy, but uh, this is what the machine looks like, at least from the bottom. Uh, let's get it up the right way. The first thing that I notice about this machine, uh, of course, is its poor condition. It's very yellowed. Uh, there's a big mark here from where the monitor has been sitting. There are lots of scrapes and scratches on it. Uh, but I also noticed that the five and a quarter inch drive has a different color to the other face plates here, just like on my machine. And it's actually possible that Compaq never made a face plate that matched. Uh, this was an option uh, that's been added, you know, after the machine was originally sold. Now this uh, face plate here is actually not a tape drive; it is just a piece of plastic. Uh, so if ever I want to remove the uh, tape drive from the other machine, I can do that. The other thing I could do, of course, is take uh, this 3.5 inch drive and uh, replace the 5.25 so that I do have matching colours. I'm actually not going to do that at the moment. I prefer to have the 5.25 inch drive for now, but if ever I sell it, that's always an option, of course. My first impression is that the mainboard in this is probably going to be identical to mine, uh, which is interesting. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Uh, you can see the machine is quite filthy inside, uh, but it does have the hard drive bracket that I've been looking for, so that is fantastic news. Uh, there's also this memory card, and uh, hopefully at least one of these two one make modules works. Uh, I've got a space for one more module, uh, so that'll be neat to be able to upgrade that. Uh, the other great thing to have, of course, is a spare power supply. Now, I don't know whether this works. We'll find that out shortly. But if it does, 
and anything goes wrong with the other one. Uh, this is a proprietary supply which would be very hard to get hold of. Uh, so if it wasn't repairable, uh, it'd be nice to have a spare. And you don't know this, but the cable on my hard drive is actually damaged and uh, there's exposed wire, so I'm going to switch that over with this one, which is an original compact one folded in the appropriate way for this machine. Uh, so that'll be nice to replace that. Uh, so I'll power it on first and see whether this actually works, whether the hard drive boots. Uh, it's a slightly different drive, I can already see that it's very deep, uh, so that'll be interesting to check out. And then I'll take the drive bay out and we'll take a close look at that main board and see if it's actually the same as mine. You're seeing this for the first time, just the same as me, uh, so let's switch it on and see if there's any smoke. It says not to operate it with the cover off and I think it would be rude not to try. I do hear sounds that are appropriate for a machine starting up, so it's looking good so far. Uh, let's see how far it counts the RAM. It should be 4 megabytes, I think, and it is, uh, so that's good. Seems to be configured correctly. Of course I expect that the real-time clock is not working, and not a surprise, it's asking for the diagnostic diskette, which I'll stick in this absolutely filthy drive and see if anything happens. It does seem to be booting from the, the floppy drive. Uh, it must know what drive is in the machine, otherwise how does it operate? Uh, so I'm really puzzled about why this procedure is necessary, uh, but here we go. Now the first time that I rebooted this, uh, it actually hung before it even got to booting the hard drive. Uh, so there is some kind of fault, it seems, with this machine, uh, which is not at all surprising. Uh, it does come up and ask for the diagnostic diskette, and uh, this time it's actually booting. So we're going into DOS, it seems. Uh, high mem tests OK, that's good. And uh, it says the mouse has installed Qt Mouse version 1.9. Uh, so let's just do the drive and see what's here. Uh, well, this looks interesting. We have games at least, and a few programs that we can try out. Eagle Eye viewers will have noticed the NC directory, and this is almost certainly going to be Norton Commander, and indeed it is. Uh, so this is a graphical overlay for DOS, and you can drag files about. Uh, there's a menu system based on function keys and so on. It still has your DOS prompt here, uh, so you can still use the machine uh, just as though you were using it from DOS. Uh, it just provides this graphical overlay. Uh, I'm not as interested in this as I am in the games directory, so let's have a look and see what's in there. Well, we seem to have hit the mother load here. There's uh, all sorts of games, Flight Sim 3, Tank, Tetris, Car, never heard of that, uh, My Chess, Paratrooper, uh, Donkey, don't know what that is, EGA Roids, Castle. Uh, so yeah, there's clearly a lot of interesting stuff here, so let's check out some of these games. This is Tank, uh, so the game started, you have to select a bunch of armaments and so on, and then you fire your weapon, uh, which I obviously got very close with, uh, and then he fires back, and then for some reason the landscape just repairs itself. Uh, so let me try again and see how we go, and there he goes. Uh, I imagine this would give you a limited amount of fun, so let's move on. This is FS3, and it's actually a non-playable demo from what I can see. Uh, so it's at Chicago Meigs taking off, which is how this demo starts, and what it does is it flies over various bits of scenery in the game which are interesting. Uh, most of the scenery in this is actually pretty basic, there are just some lines and dots, uh, and it isn't very interesting, but the demo goes over some of the more uh, you know, spectacular parts of the game. Uh, I'm going to let it run for a little bit here because uh, I want to show the frame rate uh, so we can uh, see how the graphics performs on this machine. Uh, so I did actually have this game as a kid and I believe that we had a 286 at the time so it was pretty slow uh, and really just a slideshow at that point. Uh, so it's nice to see this running at a relatively good frame rate, although it's certainly not getting above, uh, say, 10 frames a second at any point here. Uh, most of the graphics are just lines uh, and blocks rather than uh, anything textured, uh, but it does, you know, a few different tricks. For example, you can set weather and uh, it 
obviously changes to night time and so on. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead now to uh, later scenes, uh, and I think the next one is a Learjet. Well, this is indeed a Learjet, and uh, it's flying down over a bridge here towards what is an island on the left. You can see another island out in the middle of the bay on the right here, and a couple of very tall buildings uh, next to each other uh, in the middle of the screen, and then it flies under another bridge. Unfortunately, I'm a particularly ignorant Australian and didn't recognise where this was, and uh, only knowing one large bridge in the US, namely the one that I visited, the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, I assumed that that's what this was. Uh, in my defence, the Golden Gate Bridge was shrouded in fog the day that I was there, and I could barely make out that there was a bridge there. Uh, and this isn't exactly the best photorealistic rendering of whichever it is, but maybe one of my US viewers can tell me where we are. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my experience of flying into JFK Airport uh, in New York, uh, where this actually is, uh, was presumably the same as for every other person that visits there, uh, but a little unusual. Uh, in the aisle next to me was a 16-year-old Irish girl who was terrified out of her brain uh, in tears. Uh, two burly uh, security guards came around with fully populated holsters and literally dragged her on her ass uh, out of across you know in full view of everybody out of the room uh, and then I was up uh, at the desk and the conversation started you're breaking the law and you know it uh, I'm not going to be able to let you in uh, so I'll let you guess how that turned out uh, any rate uh, it now lands on a what I think is an aircraft carrier, uh, takes off again and flies around uh, to a very famous statue which I will show uh, momentarily. Obviously this is the Statue of Liberty and it's when I saw this the first time I went through this demo that I finally realized where I was. Uh, so I'm letting this play because uh, this is a fairly complicated 3D object and uh, it should be a little bit more of a challenge for the machine. Uh, but it seems to handle it quite well. Um, it, the frame rate remains just as high actually. I don't see any changes at all uh, in the speed as it goes past here. And it's a reasonably good rendering of it though. Um, it's a little bit flat looking uh, to be honest. Anyway, that is uh, FS3 so let's move on to the next game. This is Sokoban which I'm not actually familiar with uh, so that's cool. Um, it's only available in CGA and Tandy mode, unfortunately, no VGA. And you can see it's Spectrum Holobyte, uh, but it's copyright the ASCII Corporation. Uh, yep, the ASCII Corporation. Uh, so my recollection is that they teamed up with Microsoft uh, to make the MSX uh, style of computer. And so they were certainly into games big time. Uh, so let's check out uh, Soccer Barn. Uh, it's just enter and enter by the looks of it to get it to go on. I'm just going to press enter again until something happens and yeah it's a fairly standard block pushing game uh, so I'm sure that people have seen these sorts of uh, games before so uh, it's not very interesting compared to the title screen which looked quite good uh, but that was a feature of games back in the day. Uh, so anyway let's move on to the next one this is Tetris, and unfortunately I'm not a Tetris expert, uh, so I'm not going to be very good at this. Um, but it's pretty colourful, it's done nicely. And I noticed that if you press the escape key, uh, it gives you an A prompt, uh, presumably to make it look like you're doing some actual work. Uh, really, you're still in the game. If you press escape again, it'll take you straight back. Uh, anyway, I'm sure that uh, this is the umpteen dozenth uh, version of Tetris that you've ever seen in your life. It's a little fast for my liking, uh, but presumably it was designed for an earlier machine and um, not really for a 386. So let's leave that and move on to the next one. This is Car Builder and it's a pretty basic program. Uh, you can go into mechanical design here and modify the uh, chassis engine, transmission, uh, fuel, uh, etc. 
and then you can go into body design and build a new body or modify uh, your body and then you go into test and there's a wind tunnel and it tells you that this is not a particularly good car uh, then you go and you're finally able to do a road test and isn't this exciting uh, it tells you all of the things that are wrong with your car uh, which is a lot in this case because I didn't customize anything and that's about it uh, you can go back here, you can also go to car storage which I assumed would be a garage but it's really just so you can save the car onto the hard drive uh, in the very unlikely event uh, that you ever want to see it again this is attack and it's really a little bit unplayable uh, you basically just have to try and evade these missiles and it's just too fast for this platform I also skipped over Spielkister which was another selection of text mode games unfortunately all in German and there was just standard stuff like Pac-Man, Worm and others and there's really nothing of interest in there so uh, I haven't gone into every directory uh, on film uh, because not everything is actually worth showing this is EGA Roids, uh, which has the strangest set of controls of any game that I know. It's left, shift and alt to move the ship around, and then right, shift to fire. Uh, we've seen this on the channel before though, and I've actually skipped a lot of other stuff because it's my observation that most of the games that are on this hard drive would actually run on a PC, uh, certainly on a 286. So I suspect what's happened is the person who's owned this has upgraded the machine and put the old hard drive uh, into the machine. Uh, that's my best guess based on what I'm seeing. Uh, so let's uh, stop at the games and get back to the hardware on our original 386S. Before I do that I promised to show inside this machine and I've cleared out a lot of dust and a couple of the former residents uh, who had taken up uh, residence inside here. Uh, you can see that the motherboard is very similar to mine. So there's the Dallas real-time clock, which we replaced on mine. Uh, you can see the VGA uh, bay here with the metal surround. There's no cover on it, uh, same as mine. Uh, I seem to remember I have a larger white sticker on my ROM here. Um, but everything else is the same. There's the big compact chip here, the Zilog floppy controller, uh, the system RAM, that jumper's in the same place. Uh, the quartz crystals uh, and you can't see it but down in here there's only a speaker connector and no external battery connector uh, which doesn't agree with any of the diagrams I can find online uh, so I think this is a standard layout one of the standard layouts for a compact 386S uh, there's not anything unusual about it it's just that the diagrams that are online are actually incorrect uh, the hard drive is a big chunky thing as you can see now I'm not going to put this in the other machine I suspect this is from an earlier 286 uh, and the user has just upgraded the machine itself I've taken the cables out and I've given those a good clean with IPA they're still not perfect they're a little bit brown in parts but uh, they look uh, way better than they did uh, when I pulled them out uh, there's like, years of grime being wiped away there and of course there's the all-important hard drive adapter and uh, this is just something I would never be able to get anywhere uh, so being able to have one of these finally uh, is great because the hard drive is just floating around in mine of course I'm also going to take this memory card out and try each of the one meg modules now I have had some problems with this not booting uh, it doesn't make it through post uh, sometimes it just hangs I've only had that happen maybe three times out of 20 that I've started the machine and as you saw all the games are working fine and I even tested out Windows, it had Windows 3.0 on it uh, but uh, I haven't had any other problems other than booting so I'm hopeful that the memory is actually okay here and that we can use one of these boards uh, in the other machine so let's get it all in and uh, see how everything goes I've put the drive and the drive adapter in and I'm just screwing in this hawk screw here. Uh, now everything's gone fine but uh, only two of the screws actually line up uh, with the drive itself. Uh, the other two don't. Uh, it's not too much of a surprise given that this drive is out of a different uh, model 386 compact machine. Uh, there's certainly no reason to expect this to be compatible in any way. 
Uh, but it does stay in there pretty well. Uh, it's pretty solid and not going anywhere, uh, mainly because of the square shape. Uh, so I'm really happy with this. It's a much better solution than having it floating around inside the machine uh, like it was before. Well, it's not too surprising to find that the one meg board actually fits on here just fine. Uh, when I look at the settings, it says that the one meg board should be on the A side and the four meg on the B. Now, if I were designing this, uh, I would label the board A and B so that it's clear which is which. Uh, but instead, they put it on the sticker on the side of the machine, uh, which is not the same location you get the settings for the board. Uh, but in any case, this is the A side and this is the B side, so uh, let's put it in and see whether it works. Powering on, uh, we'll see how far it counts this time. So there should be one meg on the main board, uh, one on the expansion board itself, and four on the first module and one on the second module. Uh, so I think it should count to seven if it's all there, and it does. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, it seems we've upgraded the RAM okay. Uh, so we're getting beeps, it says memory size error, but that's probably because I need to run the setup program. So I'll go ahead and do that now, and uh, we should be right from then on, I think. Well, here's something interesting. I put in the compact setup disk uh, to get rid of the memory size error that we were getting, and indeed it did detect that uh, the memory size was set incorrectly in the BIOS, and it fixed that. Uh, but now that everything's set up correctly, it gives me three options instead of the usual setup. Uh, so there's setup, inspect, and test. Now, uh, those programs exist on the floppy, but when I run them previously, they would just run the setup program, uh, and they wouldn't actually run any kind of diagnostics. Uh, so I assumed that they just weren't working, but it seems that they are working, uh, but only once the machine is correctly configured. So I'm just going to go into inspect here, and we'll have a look at what that tells us. Well, when that comes up, it just tells you uh, some basic configuration information for the machine, uh, nothing that we wouldn't be surprised by, uh, and it also gives you the ROM uh, revisions. So it looks like the ROM, uh, system ROM is 1990, and the same for the video controller. Uh, it says there are some option ROMs installed. I don't know what those are. Um, then the memory board uh, is identified, and it has that correct. And after that, I don't think there's any other interesting information. Uh, it does detect that there's a compact video graphics controller. Um, and everything else is pretty much just standard information. So let's go out and now run the uh, diagnostic utility. Uh, and that's option three. This is the diagnostic utility. And uh, it has... Uh, quite a lot of settings in here. I've actually already gone into this a couple of times since I wanted to test the memory on the machine. Uh, so the first thing it does is just identify everything in the machine and then ask you if all of those options are there, and they are. Uh, so then uh, you run the diagnostic test and you can see that it goes through pretty much everything on the machine, even the serial and parallel ports uh, so I'll just select all devices here. Uh, the first thing that checks is the processor, which for some strange reason also checks the speaker, which I found a little bit odd. Uh, and I have no idea what it's actually doing here. Uh, so here's the speaker test, and it asks me uh, to hit enter for a high pitch tone, which I get, and that's quite annoying. And then the processor test is finished. Uh, so the more interesting one is the memory test, and so I'll just let it do a random test. I'm only going to do it once because I've already done this three times uh, and it's passed every time so I'm really happy about that. I think I can basically say the machine has a, a clean bill of health. Uh, so it goes through uh, some block tests here and then at the end uh, it goes through some other faster tests uh, doing all sorts of other combinations and random access and so on. Uh, so everything seems to be working perfectly uh, which is great. I'll show you some of the other tests that it does. The video graphics controller test looks pretty comprehensive. Uh, so it gives us some idea of what modes are supported here. It looks like we have uh, the standard text modes and CGA modes. Uh, then the 64200 color graphics, 64350 and 64480. Uh, so this is looking like uh, just the basic standard VGA modes. Uh, so I'm going to run all tests and see what happens. 
So it goes through very quickly. It looks like it's really just checking that the VJ memory is working. Uh, that's my guess, and obviously checking that it can go into and out of each of the modes. It goes through all the text modes and then the color modes. So this is 32200. Now the flashing you're seeing is actually the camera, nothing to do with the screen. And it just asks you, is this okay? And uh, there's a different color set there. Uh, the 64200, um, I'm not sure whether to say that's okay or not. The uh, white line there looks a little bit suspicious, but uh, otherwise everything's fine there. Oh, that's probably just because it's alternating white and dark. Uh, let's hope so anyway. Uh, display memory page zero. Oh, wow, well, that's going to take a hell of a long time to go through. Uh, worth the, oh, it's just a VGA memory, right? Okay, yep, they're all fine. Um, is the display okay? So it's nothing really uh, out of the ordinary, it's just standard test patterns and colour tests, uh, all of which seem to be passing very well. I'm able to see the colours very nicely actually. Uh, it's probably not so clear on the camera, uh, but that all looks great. So yeah, we have a working VGA, uh, that's fantastic. There's even a keyboard test here, so you just go through each of the keys on the keyboard and press them, and if they're working they go black, and so that saves you having to try and fiddle around to figure out whether they're actually going. While the tests are running, I'm just going to go ahead and use a bit of 99.9% .9 alcohol uh, to clean the machine. I've already done the keyboard and the drive base, and they've come out quite nicely. Uh, there's only so much I'm going to be able to do. There's no chance of getting this uh, back to a nice white color. Uh, because that'll require sunlight and some retro brightening and some of these marks on top here are going to come off uh, but this one for example I can see is uh, actually a scratch so there's only so much I'm going to be able to do here uh, but it is actually improving the appearance a lot of the marks that I can see uh, are actually coming out uh, with the alcohol uh, so I'll do that uh, while the tests finish off and then I'll show you the result well, let me know in the comments whether you think all the elbow grease has been worth it. Uh, I think it probably doesn't show up very well on camera, uh, but to the naked eye, about half of the marks are completely gone, and even a lot of the scratches look a lot better now because they're not full of dirt. Uh, so the other thing I'm going to do is take that keyboard cable, and I'm going to wrap it around something uh, narrow and then boil it to try and get it to coil up nicely. Uh, but other than that, I'm really happy with the way this has come out. Uh, the surfaces all look uh, really bright now. And I'm going to all this trouble, of course, because I'm going to use this machine. I really want to do some VGA programming. And uh, this is an ideal platform to do that on. It's not too fast, uh, so I'm not going to mislead myself into thinking that uh, it'll run nicely on any VGA machine. Uh, but it's also fast enough that I can do some cool stuff with it.